so not short of a fairly large job to do. <laughs> uh, the main one that I've really got to do is the polytunnel. So I, you know, uh, I've decided I'm not going to make the polytunnel any bigger, staying the same size, but I'm going to recover it um, because I've tried to pull the top tight and I just don't think it's going to work. Oh, so anyway, I've bought the plastic. The plastic is uh, winging its way towards us at the moment. So what I need to do, strip off that plastic. Um, I, the biggest problem though is just the rat damage inside. I will show you it later. But although that is the job that I am least looking forward to and I should get on with it first, but we've also brought lunch up with us today and I don't want to be covered in rat shit and digging out rat tunnels um, before I've had my lunch. <laughs> that is a post lunch activity because I don't want to be eating rat poo. So I'm going to go for a slightly nicer task first, which is enlarging the little woodland white garden that we've got right outside the shed. So this section at the back here is going to be my first job of the morning, it's slightly nicer and less ratty. <laughs> so we've got this D-shaped bed right at the front here, which was one of the first things we actually decided on and put in um, when we started the channel. And uh, we had like a vote on the shape of the bed, which was quite exciting. And it's been such a lovely little bed, this. The reason we chose it to be this shape though is because the entrance to the chicken house, the chicken run, used to be this way. It's no longer an entrance way, it's just a bit of a blank piece of land. So what I'm going to do is take this border off the back here, scrape all this soil back so that it's ready to be planted and just make it long so we've just got a larger garden at the back here. It's a totally unusable bit of land really in terms of vegetable growing because we've got the oak tree, it's very very dry, there's not a lot going on in here. So we kind of fostered a woodland gardeny type scenario going on here. We've got hellebores, Erica, got loads of bulbs, cyclamen, kind of developing in here and the garden is looking really, really nice. She, there's loads, I can't even remember what we've put in here actually. It's one of those bits where we've put so many little things in there and they come up and they're a complete surprise, which is nice. But by extending this backwards, we can really expand and use this little bit of like just dead grass at the back here because we can't even get grass to grow and I think it's going to be perfect. We've got quite a lot of bits and pieces that we want to include in there because I absolutely love epimediums which were really really lovely. Oh, no, creeping towards you. <laughs> um, epimediums are really lovely like woodland plant with these beautiful heart-shaped leaves and I want to get some of them in so making a bit more space makes sense. We've also dug up some pink anemones from the back garden um, where I've been doing a bit of work recently and uh, they're going to go in there first off, so I'll get that done. Do you remember that massive rake that Johanna got me for Christmas? This thing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these little caps off and get it to work in that space. Oh, the sun's out, it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Right, this thing is lethal. Look at that, girlies. <laughs>
Hey Lily, are you guarding the anemones? Are you guarding them? So how many of these have we got? One, two, yes, three, four, five. You're sitting on it. Six and seven. Right. We've got seven of these. So I'm going to put them in a three and a four right in the back because these are the ones that get really tall. They're like this high. If they take, they get to like this high. So I've got seven of these. I'm going to do them in two clumps, clump of four and a clump of three. They're going right at the back here against the Akibia quinata, which has taken really well. There's also the uh, jasmine at the back here. There is the pink clematis in the corner, which um, is still surviving, believe it or not. <laughs> but I'll get these in here. They are quite a traditional woodland plant. Yeah, now you don't pull these out, girlies, before they've had a chance. Hey? Be nice to them. Yeah, they, they, they can put up with some tough conditions, these plants, actually. I've seen them uh, even growing under bamboo or around bamboo, which that is, that is the marker of a tough beast. <laughs> if these take, these will be fantastic along the back here. They've got quite low foliage, but the flowers rock it up to about 1 meter 20 and they're beautiful pink flowers. I don't have the variety name of them because this is just one that I've shunted around and it's spread and I've dug bits out of it for years and years and years. <laughs> so I don't know. And these particular ones have come out of a rather uh, unfriendly corner of our back garden, which I have been giving some attention to in the pouring rain over the last week. Uh, the hydrangea petiolaris, which is this that I'm chopping back right now, the climbing hydrangea has uh, decided to fold itself right over the top of this fence so that it's all in the neighbour's garden. And the neighbour's garden likes things to be super tidy. So I think I better just, <laughs> just sort out the top of this. So we've got the hydrangea and we've also got two roses in here. One of them is a cream David Austin rose that I do not know the name of. It's got no scent but it flowers like you can't believe. It's just incredible all summer long. Amazing. And the other one we've got in here is Kathleen Harrop which is a beautiful delicate little pink rose that smells incredible. So with the two of them going, it's pretty lovely. Part of the reason for a chop back and also for digging those anemones out is uh, we're hoping to get a bit more use out of the back garden this year than we did last year because we had such miserable summer. We were barely out there. The barbecue never really kicked in and <laughs> just like the year before, basically cooked everything on it. Okay, there we go. Yes. Thank you. It's a, it's not a lily, it's a, no, it's a forget-me-not, so I'm going to try and foster it, it was in the packet. We have. They wouldn't take over, but I want to sort of slowly try and foster them, just one getting in, then it'll self-seed. And... So there we have seven Japanese anemones in the back there. Hey girls! Actually there's only two girls. The other two girls are over there, hey madams? Huh? Over there? Yeah. Those chickens, now they know how to get out. They just, they just refuse to stay in their house. Anyway, picking a bit of something to go in the lunch. We've got the tops of the Cavalanero which are starting to sprout. So I'll just take the very tender tips out and then leave the rest of the stems to sprout more goodies. Yum yum scrub. God, they're so soft, these tips.
Okay, this feels like a big step, but I've ordered the plastic. It's coming next week. So it's being recovered. <laughs> Just feels like a big step, cutting it off. I can't cut all of it off today because I've got things like this, which is screwed on and I didn't bring the drill with me, which was rather stupid, but you know, that's the way things go. <laughs> and there's gonna be lots of bits and pieces sticking out. I'm gonna take the majority of it off now because once I've taken it off, you'll be able to see the absolute carnage in there that the rats have been creating. Uh, because it's a perfect spot for them, it's like totally dry, um, protected, cosy. Mm. So I'm going to cut it off and leave it exposed for a couple of days at least just to get some of the rat fumes out. And then I will uh, dig all the soil out. I'm going to line the bottom of it. For rats, definitely, because they are a problem, but also tree roots. I'll show you what I mean by the tree roots um, when I get to that point. But yeah, it's happening. Wish me luck. plastic at the front here is obviously in really good nick so I'm going to cut this off in big panels and use it to recover the cold frame which interestingly enough is actually covered in the original polytunnel cover when we had you know one of those green sort of flimsy numbers anyway I'm going to cut this off in sort of as big a sections as I can that's usable this front and the sides are pretty good the back obviously where it got stabbed so many times on that first week that we had it it's less usable the roof panel also I should be able to make good use out of, so it's not going to go to waste. Something that I won't need to replace is the EnviroMesh panels that I've got over the windows. They're still in perfectly good nick, so I will leave them alone. But the polytunnel as a whole ended up being so much more humid than I had realised it was going to be. Much more humid than any of the bought polytunnels we've ever had. Far more so than the greenhouse even. So the wood has actually suffered a little bit. What I'm going to do is before I recover it, I will strip all of my sort of sticky tape and stuff off it that I've got to protect the plastic. And I'm going to paint the whole frame with a wood preservative, just try and prolong its life. There's no kind of structural damage in the sense that the wood isn't rotting away yet. But I think if I left it for another three or four, even five years that I'm hoping the next cover's going to last, uh, I think it would have really suffered. So now is my opportunity to get that done. Actually, I tell you what, an advantage of it being so humid in here is that things that are normally really vulnerable to uh, spider mite, like my aubergines and cucumbers also, we're gonna grow them in here next year because spider mites hate the humidity. Well, that actually feels quite sad. <laughs> uh, it's like his little bare bones. Um, but yeah, needed to be done. Now let me show you the joy of what the rats have done in here. So you can see from the outside here, they've they're actually it's so difficult to show you on the camera because you can't really see how high it's been built up. But oh, that's very nice. Look, there's actually a dead rat right on the top of it. It's part of the reason I didn't want to be digging inside a clothes bag. But can you see how, how much that is dug up? And this poor sedum here is practically completely buried. So I'm going to have to sort that out. But from the inside, look at these huge rat holes just disappearing. I've just, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And they've churned all of this soil up, which isn't compost. It's like from the soil underneath. See how much that's dug out. And they've gone all the way under this floor here because look, it's starting to collapse. There's nothing under there now. So we'll pull all of this up and uh, start again. They really are a bugger, those rats. I mean, they've just, it was never this bad at all, but we started getting a load of digging around, not in the um, chicken house because they can't get into the chicken house. So that's like the, the girlies are safe because that's all been meshed underneath for foxes, not rats, but it's, it's served the same purpose. But they'd started digging all the way along the back section here and we didn't want them close to the girls. So we blocked all of that off 
put a lot of stone down and kind of moved it around and where I had the plastic from the girls like excess roof rolled up there they dug all under that because they like the dry ground um, but as soon as we got rid of all of that because we've tidied it up massively back there they moved in under here and it wasn't something I thought that was going to be a problem and so there is nothing underneath here other than weedproof matting which is obviously completely inadequate against a rat but as well as the rat issue um, I'm going to uh, put down under here I'm going to put mesh and plastic uh, because we have got a, also a real problem with the tree roots do you remember me saying on like um, the history episode that this side of the plot has become really really difficult to grow on because of tree roots well let me show you the tree roots so like all through here and it ha it's happened a couple oh god that's a bit of a weird angle <laughs> um yeah it's happened a couple of times but we've got all these like they're so thick i'm not kidding look at this every year we clear this completely out and every year they come back this is just a single season single season of growth they just come straight up through the ground into here look at that I mean how do you expect your tomatoes to grow with this just filling and we pull it like every spring before we plant the tomatoes we're just pulling tons of this stuff out of here which is coming from these trees just behind us it's absolutely awful stuff it's like I'm not going to go too far into the rat section, but look at it. I mean, how we're expecting any lovely, beautiful tomatoes to grow in there, I don't know. And this is just all through the bed. Look, it's all coming up under here. It's just ridiculous. So the original idea of this raised bed was to have it open at the bottom to kind of, although we were filling it with like a mixture of our compost and potting compost, it was going to be more like growing in the soil, like just having it kind of, um, you know, some people are lucky enough to have a polytunnel that they can just like dig through the floor because <laughs> they've got beautiful soil under their polytunnel. That was the original idea of this. So it was just going to be like slightly raised. So exactly the same way that our beds out there are raised, but they're not, they've got nothing on the bottom of them. They just go straight down onto the soil, you know, to let all the microbes and the worms and everything come up. But it's just not going to work on this side of the plot. This is, this is not cool. And if we had beds on this side of the plot, like we used to, um, they're just full of this as well. So, yeah, we really need to put a base on this greenhouse. Actually, I tell you what, I'm just ticking those things off that list, but it is five to five, February. <laughs> Look at me. I've just got like this tiny little t-shirt jumper on. It is so warm. It's incredible. It's like 16 degrees today. It's nuts. Isn't it, girls? Nuts. Yeah. And actually, like quarter to five, it's just starting to kind of get dark, but it's so lovely really reluctant to go home. It's like the first time this year where I've been really like, reluctant to leave. But before I do go, 
I've got some on the bottom of that list is so cress and it is Iranian cress uh, which is from a bloke up there actually Lily's dad has given us some and he uh, gave us some what was it two years ago and then I saved seed but I didn't save any this year so this is really good such a delicious tasting like peppery just marvelousness yeah so I'm going to get some of that sewn into a tray it's not going to need anything exciting I'm just going to put it in the uh, greenhouse and it will will do its own thing Hey girls, it'll do its own thing. It will. Right, seed tray. That will do. I know, Gaddy. I know. Little sausage. Little sausage. Right, we need some compost in here, Lil. We do. Actually, this is funny. This table, this is one of the tables that uh, I spotted in those really early photographs of the of the allotment <laughs> it's been with us a long time oh that's not compost this is melkor of course staying on brand you know but i love this stuff i love this stuff even more since i've seen what goes into it of what doesn't go into it, it's not full of all sorts of nasty crap. Right. I know it's a bit wobbly, this table, isn't it, madam? It's a bit wobbly, but this isn't for lilies. No, no. Yes, you put your little magic, a little bit of extra fluff on there. That will help it germinate. It will. That will help. It will. That will help. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I've just put compost all over you. Sorry, sweetheart. Not intentional. Very thoughtless when you have to clean yourself with your tongue, isn't it? Right, madam. That is the crest that your dad gave us. Thank you very much, Hadda. Let me get a label. Do, do. Do, 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 do. Oh, I've got the, I don't know if you can still hear me. Oh yeah, I'm wearing a mic. <laughs> uh, I've got the theme tune to Great British Menu stuck in my head. Iranian. No, please don't knock that off, sugar plum. You've been a liability in the garden, madam. Oh yeah, liability. Liability. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Do, I can't believe what a gorgeous evening it is. I can't believe what a gorgeous evening it is. It's wonderful, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful. I that like the dress, but <laughs> I have got... A thermal, a fleece and a ski jacket. <laughs> I think it's absolutely magic. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, I know I normally only catch rats and magpies on my trail cam. <laughs> it's none of that exciting badgers that I was hoping for so far. But this time, I am actually hoping to catch rats on the trail cam. I'm going to point this directly at that hole. And I want to see them poke their heads out and look horrified that their lovely, cosy polytunnel is no more. <laughs> yes, I'm being malicious but I want to see the look on their faces when they see that they're in trouble. <laughs> Knowing me, I won't even catch a rat this time. Oh, I'm still singing that song from Great British Menu. Do, 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 do. We've got two of those dogs, you know. We have. 
Well, this was an excellent device today. Let's tie it in behind there. See you later, Fluff. See you tomorrow, Fluff. See you tomorrow, Fluff. Ooh, are we in play mode? She's pretty scary when she goes. Hey, you pretty girl. I mean, you would you would literally be taking your life in your hands if you went to touch those incredible curly that curly tummy. There'd just be nothing left. You wouldn't even have a hand. <laughs> Ferocious Lil. Ferocious Lil. That's us done for the day, chaps. Tomorrow morning, it's supposed to be dry again. And I'm going to head over to Kew Gardens because their woodland garden should be looking really fantastic about now. And I'm hoping to get a bit of inspiration for our new patch. So I will see you there in the morning. Right, see you tomorrow. Good morning, good morning. Look at the crocuses. Oh, it's looking stunning here at the moment. And epimediums. This is what I want to get going in that little patch of garden. I love epimediums. And I used to have about five or six varieties of them, although I did not know that their common name was barren wart. <laughs> That's not attractive. <laughs> anyway, I used to have about six different varieties of epimedium in the back garden, and unfortunately they're all in pots and we got vine weevil, and they were all obliterated. Oh, that scylla's pretty. There's some blue ones over here as well. They are so pretty. Well, I definitely have to get hold of some of them. Absolute beauties. Yeah, here's another epimedium. They've got this lovely foliage, like, and the leaves kind of, it almost looks like they hover above the plant. They're gorgeous, and their flowers come out on these, like, little spikes, and they look like little spiders. They are so pretty. So, yes, I'm going to get myself some epimediums. But while we're on this side of Kew Gardens, uh, this is also where the vegetable patch is. So I want to go and see what they've got going on for winter. Just spotted this edge worthier on my way down there. Like, <laughs> it's such a strange-looking plant. It just looks like coral at this time of year. Such a weird looking chat. <laughs> Smells incredible though. And underneath it actually another really weird looking one. This is the sea kale. So we've got this in a pot outside the greenhouse. Um, Cranby maritimus, I think it's called. Yeah, I'm quite looking forward to that. We never ate it last year. So hopefully this year we're actually going to get to try it. Okie dokie, here we go chaps. Although I've got to say there is not a great deal going on in here. Uh, I mean, they're all prepped for spring, but Where's all your winter veg queue? <laughs> There's nothing here, chaps. Uh, I take that back. There is a bit over here. Um, but this is just their sample bed for growing in a small space. It's just like one of everything. There is some spinach and some endive, you know, like frizzy lettuce down there. I've got some of this growing, but unfortunately the girlies have taken to it and they've just kicked soil all over it. So it's a bit rough at the moment. <laughs> Lamb's lettuce and Claytonia. Claytonia, another one that I haven't ever grown, but I have got seeds for it. So I think I'm going to do that this year. They've um, done a whole new refurb on this mushroom area. I don't know if you remember last year, they had um, badger damage down this end. So they've obviously like meshed it all over and trying to protect it. And uh, the only thing they've really got growing is broad beans and they're not looking that hot. <laughs> I don't know if that's really satisfying or, or it's disappointing. But anyway, their Aguadolfi are not looking snaz. Student beds are coming along really nicely. Oh, look, oh, this is nice to see. Like last year they had this like wildflower meadow across here and it's obviously like self-seeded like crazy. So we'll see what comes up there this year if they don't hoe it all off. But the student beds actually, look, they're all prepped and ready. Oh, somebody's got very keen on some uh, tall growing structures. structures. Somebody's already started, but all the rest of them still blank. Yeah. I will return to woodland goodies. I love this little section of the garden. It's right behind the Temple of Adonis. I think it is the one on top of the mound. Oh, look at that. It's just like a sea of purple. I don't know if it's coming out on the camera actually, it looks a bit white on the camera, like in the real life, it's just so purple, it looks really lovely. Actually, I tell you what, I'm surprised 
that there's so few hellebores here. I seem to remember last year this was just smothered in them. Maybe they had a bit of a thin down. Oh, look at this one. Another epimedium. You can see that that's got proper heart leaves. I'm not sure which one that is, actually. Here's some more hellebores. Looking beautiful. We don't have any white ones, actually, in that little bed. You might have to get some of those. Classic pink. But yeah, chaps, I feel quite inspired. I'm going to race out and buy... There's the temple. The uh, orchid exhibition is on at the moment. Look at that queue. <laughs> but yeah, look. Oh, look, these look more purple on the camera. I can see it. This is like showing up. They're so beautiful. I'm going to have to get some crocuses too, chaps. I'm going to have to get some crocuses. Crocuses, epimediums, more hellebores. We go. So if I can get something going like that in miniature in that new little extension of that bed, I will be very happy. <laughs> it's really nice that kind of woodland garden because all of the excitement really happens like proper early in the year when things are still looking a bit sad and you don't have a great deal of colour anywhere else. You just get this incredible like, yeah. So that's what I'm aiming for in that space. <laughs> anyway. Last week, you may remember, I was supposed to be potting up my onions and I didn't have any seed trays, couldn't find any. Well, a quick trip to good old Squires has furnished me with some new seed trays. I got some smaller ones and some big ones. I'm gonna put my onions into here. And these ones, as my various flowers and uh, antirhinums and cosmos and stuff start needing to be potted up, they're gonna go into that size. But this is for the onions. So these are the onions from the Potty Mouth Grow Along that we sewed on Boxing Day and I should have got these out at least a couple of weeks ago. But they're all right. They've been in pretty decent conditions likewise. They've been downstairs in the conservatory, which is, I mean, for what light we have got, that's got the maximum. <laughs> and they don't look too bad. And in preparation for potting them up, I've given them an incredibly good soak. I soaked them last night. I basically, like, put a good inch of water in the bottom of here and then drained it out this morning so they're proper soggy so we should be able to transplant them without too much damage right Let's see. so these seed trays are like a halfway house between the really good ones like the container wise style uh, pots um, and and the really ridiculously flimsy ones. These are quite, quite, I mean, they're decent. They're not, they're not gonna last me 10 years, but they're also not only gonna last me one. So it's a compromise, the best I could find at short notice without going to Amazon. And I've bought some, actually these are quite pretty good. That's quite solid. Uh, I've bought some uh, seed trays off Amazon in the past that were supposed to be really robust and they were absolutely pants. So I like to be able to kind of feel them before I buy them. How many, so what have I got here? I have got Isla Craig, Red Baron and Rinsburger. So they are the three that I want to actually grow into proper onions. I've also got Ishikura in here, but they're gonna stay in their little seed trays. Right, so I'm gonna need three trays. Am I gonna need three trays or is that excessive, Jesse? I'm working out how many to pot up because uh, I obviously sprinkle sewed these, so there's a lot going on in here, but uh, also how much of my beds do I want to be taken up with onions? Cause I've got a lot of stuff to grow this year and onions are often a fail because of um, white rot and leaf miner. So they're not a guaranteed crop. So if I take up three whole beds of onions and they fail, I'll be a sad bunny rabbit. Maybe I'll just do half a tray of each. Or Rinsberger and Isla Craig are both white onions or like, you know, brown onions. So I might do half a tray of Rinsberger, half a tray of Isla Craig and a whole tray of Red Baron. That's what I'll do. Just get the, these filled with compost. Actually, talking of uh, Silver Grow. <laughs> Uh, JB's video is out, um, his like partner piece to my uh, one that I did last week when we went for a trip to the uh, Melk or Silver Grove factory. Um, his is the one that actually gives you the information, mine was a bit of a jolly, so I would definitely go and watch his. In fact, 
I will put the link for it underneath in the show description this week because it is definitely worth it. It's only a 20 minute long video, but it's absolutely packed with the, all the information that we picked up that day. So that is definitely worth a quick watch. Okay, let's get this all in here nicely. That's quite handy, look, they've got their own little dividers there, I didn't realize. So this is also gonna be our first time trying out these short, they're not really root trainers, but they're the splittable pots. I think it's gonna make potting up these onions so much easier. Who should we start with? Rinsberger? Look at that, they come away perfectly. Do you remember me saying, I'm just gonna crouch here. <laughs> but do you remember me saying that when I was trying to demonstrate to you, they were a bit weird trying to open them up. <laughs> and then I made it look like a, a really difficult activity. That's because there wasn't any compost in them. And um, you could tell though, that if they were full, that they would come apart really nicely. And as you can see, they've come apart a joy. And you can see, obviously, uh, these are not individual plants and I'm gonna be potting them up from here. But you can see that if that was a solid, plant with one root system that would just push out of there absolutely perfectly and uh, be deposited in the soil with very little root disturbance. Unfortunately, exactly the thing that I'm about to do here is disturb these roots to the max. But look at that, they come out so easily. So I wasn't going to, but I've changed my mind. I'm gonna to top these onions. It's another one of those like to chit or not to chit things. Like <laughs> some people swear by it, other people not so much, but these seedlings are really quite long. And I've tried, so I always trim leeks and I don't know why I don't normally trim onions, but to be fair, I don't normally grow onions from seed. I grow shallots from seed and leeks from seed, uh, but not onions. And I top, the leeks, definitely. So why not top these? But I have seen a lot of people when they're potting up their onion seedlings, uh, they do just chop the tops off. Seems counterintuitive, but it's exactly what I do with my leeks. And the leeks come back really, really strong. So I don't know why I'm hesitating about it. I'm going to do it because they're all like flopping over each other. I think it's just gonna make them much tidier. And I know with the leeks, they come back so much stronger. I never do it with spring onions, for example, because that's what you want. You want all that floppy top growth. But these, you don't. <laughs> with my incredibly professional garden shears, i.e. nail scissors, I'm just gonna take the tops of these off. I'm saving the tops, putting them in a little pile because I will eat them because they're delicious. You see what happened there? I just pulled one out accidentally. That's what's happening with them being all so long. They're just getting all tangled with each other. It's gonna to be too difficult. Get back in there, boyo. No escape for you. I'm cutting them above the point where they're splitting. So where they have more than one leaf, I'm making sure I cut above that point. But that, is a much tidier situation and they have much less chance of getting snapped. Come on in chaps, let's just tidy you all up.
that is one tray complete. Don't they do it lovely and tidy when they've been snipped? <laughs> it's worth doing just for that. But talking about lovely and tidy, um, there was exact, this does, I love it when things like this happen, but there was exactly the right number of onions in here. Look, there's none left. Exactly the right number. It's outrageously satisfying. However, I have just remembered that I said I was only going to do half a tray, didn't I? Oh well, it looks like we've got a whole tray of Rinsberger. Which means we'll have a whole tray of Isla Craig and a whole tray of Red Baron and uh, I will be giving onions away <laughs> when it's time to plant them out. But these little gems, I mean they're quite unwieldy when they're when they don't have anything in them. They're like quite difficult to kind of click them in and all the rest of it, but they work a dream when you're trying to get things out of them. Okay. So, tray one, complete. I'm just gonna potter on with the rest of these. These are one of this is one of those jobs that I know that some people just find despairingly boring. But I love it. Just stick a podcast on, pot up your onions. It's beautiful. However, look at this, right? Can you see that sunshine pouring through the window? We are currently on a weather warning. We're supposed to have four days of torrential rain, like the whole of the bottom of England. Well, in fact, most of England, the bottom half of Britain, just is like under this big yellow rain weather warning. It has been magnificent blue skies. <laughs> I think somebody needs to check on these weather people because they're clearly, they're clearly all in the wrong job. <laughs> Bye. Cheers, chaps. So the good news is the plastic has arrived for the polytunnel. So that project is all go. It's not just gonna be left like that. <laughs> I've got quite a lot to do before I can recover it though. So obviously all the groundworks have to be done. And so is tree roots. I mean, the rats are a problem obviously, but those tree roots, I mean, every spring, like before we replant, we dig all of that tree root out so it's totally clear. And then that's what happened just over the season. It just grows back up in those big fibrous masses. You can imagine how much they strip out of the soil. They just take everything out of it. So yeah, rats and tree protection is going in. I've also got to strip back the wood where I've got all like the sticky stuff stuck to it, the padding to stop the plastic ripping. Uh, take all of that off and paint the wood just to stop it, you know, deteriorating with how humid it is in that uh, polytunnel. But I've gone with exactly the same plastic that I had last time before I bought the plastic before. I did quite a lot of research into sort of what one I wanted and I ended up going with first for tunnels. They're like thermo plastic. And despite the fact that I'm replacing it after three years, I've actually been really, really happy with it. Just as a couple of things that were sort of um, not their fault that went wrong with it, i.e. the teenagers who stabbed it, um, the problem with the roof, when the top panel broke and so it sagged slightly in the heat, um, I need to tighten all that back up. But yeah, really happy with that plastic, so I've just gone with exactly the same one again. Uh, but obviously I need to, to do all that work first, because <laughs> no point covering it when I still got to dig all that hideousness out. Of the center. So we're just going to bag all of that soil up. I'm not going to change the soil particularly. Bag it all up, take that opportunity to clear the tree roots out, make a new base for it, and then stick all of that straight back on. But ha ha, talking of the rats. So did we manage to catch a rat on the trail cam? Well, I can tell you, no, we did not. We managed to catch a bit of rain and a bit of ruffling parsley. We also managed to catch, though, a rare sighting of mum. <laughs> Here she is looking to see if she can see the trail cam. So yeah, not, not the most exciting of uh, catches on the trail cam. I just, I'm gonna persevere with it. I am because one day we will get something exciting. I promise. I hope. I hope. 
well, the beginning of next week is going to be another excursion before we crack on with polytunnel stuff. Um, it is the Garden Media Guild press event thing that I can never remember what it's called, but it's that thing up in Angel. So there's going to be a lot of familiar faces at the beginning of next week's vlog and a bit of a jolly before we crack on. And I've uh, got a lot of sewing to do next week. I'm going to get a lot of flowers in. The only flowers that I've sewn so far are the snapdragons, the antirhinums. They're in. Not up yet, though. I've got cosmos and all sorts that I really want to get started. And now that I've got the onions out of that, um, they're not root trainers because they're short, mini root trainers. Uh, I've got a bit more space. Yeah, wish me luck on the flower front. Uh, after we had the flower special on Potty Mouth, I uh, may possibly have got a little overexcited and ordered a ton more varieties. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Uh, the broad beans are up that we sowed last week. So that is jolly. And talking of Potty Mouth, the Potty Mouth that came out this Monday, uh, JB and I and Tony, and Audrey, although Audrey was just a bit like, what? <laughs> uh, we discussed quite a lot about uh, the trip to Melkor and kind of expanded on the Silver Grow side of things with Tony. So that was quite interesting. If you uh, fancy having a listen to that and you haven't already, I'll put the link underneath. <sighs> and that, chaps, I think concludes this, this video. <laughs> Vlog 202 is done. So a massive cheers to my patrons, who are the people whose names you see at the end of every video. Huge cheers to them. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate the support. And cheers to everybody else out there who watches week in, week out. I'll see you next week for rat digging.